What's going on, Nature Freaks? What's up, Nature Freaks? Dave and Jeremy back again with another Saturday slap in the face. I'm compelled to make this video because a few months back we put out a short asking people to identify the venomous cottonmouth to the harmless water snake, and about 35% of the people got it wrong. So we felt the need to put out another video so you guys can tell the difference. Get ready to learn something. Nature in your face! All right, so let's jump right into it. When we say common water snake, that is a super broad term, all right? But we are specifically talking about the genus Nerodia and any snake in that genus, within that genus, that is similar to the cottonmouth. Because there are ones that look nothing alike. You would never confuse them. We're only talking about the ones that have similarities and would be found in the same range and habitat. Yeah, speaking of similarities, we should probably talk about similarities first because these snakes do look very similar. First of all, they're both aquatic. They can be found in and near water. Also, they're colored and patterned similarly, both as juveniles and as adults. They can also have similar markings like saddles and bands. They also have keeled scales as opposed to smooth scales. So there really, really are uh, confusing similarities between these two species. Yeah, 100%. And we've seen juveniles next to each other, um, like the erythrogaster, Neur Neurodia erythrogaster, the plain belly. As a juvenile, it has a pattern, it has red on it. And when you compare that to a juvenile cottonmouth, which also is red and black with a pattern, you could easily be confused by that. They both have triangular shaped heads. Although um, the water snake has a less distinct head to neck as opposed to the uh, cottonmouth, which has large venom glands. So that's why in general, most of these venomous snakes have larger heads because they have to hold those venom glands and the venom within. Yeah, so that's tricky. Um, the water snake, it only has a triangular head when it feels threatened and they will flatten their head out and it becomes very triangular, but it's a flat, really awkward triangular head. It's not like they were saying this big, chunky, meaty head on a narrow neck that that's always like that they don't have to flatten it out to be there so that can be tricky um so when we go over these this is going to be a recipe on how to bake a cake to determine which one right. is which you don't ever use just one of these to determine which is which now the number one easiest way to tell a venomous cotton mouth is when you approach it it will gape Mm -hmm. It will warn you. That's why they call them cottonmouth. They reveal the white lining. So if that happens, it is not a water snake. They do not do that at all. They don't <clears> sit there and they don't gape. And so that is the number one. Now, do they always gape? No. Rattlesnakes don't always rattle. Right. But if it does <clears> gape, 100% a cottonmouth. If it doesn't gape, we got to use these other things. Yeah. And it, I would say it would only gape if you really got close to it and it felt that you were some sort of threat to it. Speaking of approaching mm -hmm. it, if you approach a water snake, it typically is not going to stand its ground. Now, again, these are just generalizations. Could a water snake stand its ground? Yes. But usually when a water snake sees a person, it picks up the movement, it is out of there. It's going to turn around. It's going to slither in the water. It's going to go under. You're not going to see it. Whereas a cottonmouth tends to say, hey, I'm venomous. I don't need to run from you. I'm big. I'm bad. I got venom glands. I'm going to stand my ground. Let's go. Exactly. And when they do stand their ground, the cotton mouth, they gape, they vibrate their tail. But the water snake will also vibrate its tail if it does get cornered. Now, the one thing to differentiate there, if you corner the snake on accident, on purpose, they're both in defensive position. The water snakes, they'll strike readily yeah. just to back you up. The cotton mouth, it usually will not. It will just gape and gape further and gape further and flex its fangs. And I mean, that right there is a huge way to tell easily. Yep. Another, I don't know if this is a great comparison or I should say difference, but uh, typically the cotton mouths will have markings on their head that the water snakes do not. Yeah, and, and the cotton mouth has a mask. They look like they're about to rob you because they have a black stripe. <laughs> it goes through the eye and it kind of obscures and hides their eye. And the water snake has bars on their lips. So vertical bars running up and down. Now obviously you have to get close enough to the snake to see its head to determine it. But I mean, if you're really trying to figure out what it is, then you'll be getting this close. Um, also- Yeah, talk about the super oculars. Super oculars, that's a fun word to say. Super ocular, bruh. The, <laughs> the venomous cotton mouth super ocular, man. has like basically little hoods that rest over the eyes. These scales extend out to a point and if viewed from above, you cannot see the eyes of the cotton mouth. If you were to look over the top of a water snake, you see his big little cute eyes there. He just looks super cute. 
Yeah. Now let's talk about the juveniles. A little bit easier to tell the difference between a juvenile cottonmouth and a water snake because of the caudal lure. The caudal lure meaning the tail. It has that bright yellow tail. Talking about the cottonmouth. It looks like an insect, so it'll attract birds, it'll attract lizards. They come in to grab it. Snake easily envenomate it, track it down and eat it. Yeah, so the caudal lure. 100% obviously, and that's initially, they grow out of that um, fairly quickly. One way that is not foolproof, but <clears throat> only the cotton mouth can completely float on top of water. The water snakes cannot do that. Now they will float in the water and their back will be exposed as well, but they are not completely sitting fully exposed on top of the water. Only the cotton mouth can do that. But when the cotton mouth swims, it's not a guarantee it stays on top of the water like that. Its body can sink. So that's not really the best one to uh, rule out either one. There is a better way when they're swimming. Uh, cotton mouths tend to periscope. They will lift their, almost like if you've ever seen that famous photo of the Loch Ness Monster, kind of like this. It doesn't always do it again, but the, the water snake never does it. <clears throat> so if you see that guy swimming like this, you're probably not going to have to worry about it anyway because it's swimming away from you. That's a dead giveaway. I am no pun intended. I am a cotton mouth. <laughs> uh, another thing that I've noticed is just personal thing that I've noticed is the cotton mouths can be found quite a ways from water in heavy forest. You're usually not going to find a water snake too far from the water. So, you know, if you're hiking in the forest and you see a dark snake, you don't know what it is, and you're considerable distance from the water, it's likely going to be a cotton mouth, not a water snake. That's right. And um, I don't know if we went over this, but they both have peeled scales. Yeah, I did mention that, but you I didn't, didn't mention, mention that. what that means. Yeah, what does that mean? Um, it looks like the scales have been folded and creased, and so they have like a bit of a raised area down there. They both have that. So if you just got a section, just a picture of the body, <clears throat> you would really need to know your snakes to be able to determine, hey, is this a cotton mouth or not? Um, once you see the head and you study up on this, you'll know instantly. It's just like if you if you have children, you can recognize someone you know, you're not even a kid, just someone you know in a crowd easily. You don't have to go, wait a minute, do they have ears? Do they have hair? How are they walking? Right away, you recognize it. So the more you study this, you can go into the field or you can see a picture, boom, you know what it is. You don't have to think about it. You can just tell the difference. All right, I think that covers everything. Yeah, if you guys have any questions um, that we can go into a little further, or if you have had an experience or you've had to tell, uh, let us know what's the best way that you've used to determine, you know, danger versus not so danger needle. Yeah, and lastly, guys, get a field guide. That's the best way. If you study photos, it's just going to give you a better idea, aside from this video, on how to tell the difference between these two snakes. And also, geographically, mm. <laughs> cotton mouths aren't found everywhere, nor are some of these water snakes, but water snakes are more common. So figure out where, do they even live in the area, these snakes? And if they don't, you don't have to worry about it. But if you travel somewhere, we hope this video will give you a better understanding of how to tell the difference. We appreciate you guys watching. Hope you comment. And we'll see you guys on the next Saturday Slap in the Face.